Hey guys, welcome back to another video right here on Free Will Photos and the Creative Color mini series. Today, what we're going to be doing is using the Curves filter along with some other filters inside of Almond Photo Raw to get a color grade look. Today, what I'm going to do is take you through some presets, which you can download by looking in the description box below. And then I'm also going to show you how you can use these presets kind of like a LUT. Uh, so stay tuned to the end of the video to figure that out, but let's go ahead and just dive right in So here we are inside of all my photo raw and before we dive into Using some of these presets. I want to talk to you briefly about curves So I'm going to click on the effects filters or the effects tab add filter and let's just go ahead and throw a curves filter on now, if you're not familiar with the Curves filter, it is separated into four distinct tabs. The first tab is more of your Tone tab. This is called All. You can see that over here on the far left. And the next tab is the Red channel, which if you increase it, you're going to uh, add red. And if you decrease it, you're going to add blue into the overall image. The Green channel, if you increase it, you're going to add green. And if you decrease it, you're going to add magenta. And then, let me undo that one. And then the blue channel, if you increase it, you will add blue. And if you decrease it, you'll add cyan. Now, obviously, based on what it is you're trying to do, you can do a lot of really cool color uh, things that are creative. Now, on the All tab, this is more of the tone. You have your shadows in the bottom segment here. You have your midtones in the middle of it. And then you have your highlights in the top segment. You have your endpoint down here in the bottom far left corner. This is the blackest points on your image. And then as you move over to the right, you start to take away or de increase that black uh, until you've increased it all the way to where there's pure black. All right. And then if you bring this up, you start to remove some of the black from your image. And as you can see, it starts to increase the overall uh, presence of the, the white. And it gives your image more of a faded look. All right. Now at the top, if you were to bring this down, it's going to darken your image because you're taking away some of the brighter tones in your image. And then if you bring it to the left, you are going to increase the highlights uh, and the whites in your image overall. All right. So that is how this works in a nutshell. Now you can put points all over on this thing. I'm going to put a bunch of them just so you can see. Uh, what happens here, right? So if I drag a point, the two on the, the one right before it and the one right after it, they serve as an anchor. So if I want to protect a particular segment of my photo, then that's essentially what I want to do. I want to put an anchor point down and then drag another point. Now, one of the downsides to On One Photo Raw, and if the developers ever see this video, please give us the ability to delete individual nodes without hitting Control or Command Z. Because right now, if I wanted to get rid of this node, I think I made this one before I made all these other ones. So I have to hit Command Z to undo every single edit. I don't know why someone thought that was a good idea, but it would be nice if they just give us a, the ability to delete nodes wherever they are on the scale. All right. Now, like I mentioned before, this is your shadow area and this is your highlight area. And then you can drag if you want your midtones to be more in the shadow tone because you want a darker image. You can just drag a node into that area and it starts to bring that curve. And then if you want to lighten up the image or make it a little bit more faded, you can bring up the blacks. That's the tone curve. Now, this is the creative color mini series. So where we're going to spend a lot of time today uh, and in the presets that you're going to see is inside of the red, green and blue channels, because 
just as you can move your tones in the shadows and the highlights, you can actually pinpoint this to just the areas of your image where you are, or the segments of your image where you really want that. So let's say I want to increase the reds in my shadow area. I can put a node right there that's going to protect everything beyond the node. So I can increase this and it starts to add red into the shadows, but you can see in the brighter areas, there is no red. Now, if I wanted to add blue into those areas, I just pull it the opposite direction. And now you can see that it's adding blue into the darker areas of my image. All right. And as I move this around, you can see that it starts to increase those blues. And if I just want to get like, you know, a little bit of a S curve going here. Now I have introduced blues into my shadows and reds into my highlights. And you can see that moving around over here. All right. And then it doesn't stop there. You can go into the green channel and you can fade certain colors. So if you want more of a magenta vibe, you can pull down on your green channel and that's going to add more magenta across your entire image. And if you want more green in your image, you can pull up from the bottom and it is going to allow you to add more green. Now, if you wanted to add magenta just into your shadow areas, you should put a node down and then pull this until you start to get that magenta look that you're going for. Now, because uh, this is already, um, I guess, housing a lot of blue, you're not seeing much of that magenta come through in the shadow area because over here, I've already added in some information in the shadow area. Plus, these are some pretty dark contrasty colors uh, or non-contrasting colors. So it makes it a little bit more challenging to see. Um, but as you pull this, you know, even more, you can start to see it show up in more of the midtones. Um, now, if you wanted to protect again, those, those midtones and really get that magenta into the darker areas, you can see, you can clip it. It doesn't look very good. All right. But lots of power there. Now we'll go into the blue channel. Now the blue channel, as I said before, if you increase it, you get blue. If you decrease it, you get cyan. Now my, this is my favorite channel to work, uh, especially when it's a portrait or a photo that has a lot of yellows and reds, uh, cyan and red really work well together. Uh, in my opinion, now that's just my, my personal taste. Some people may be like, no, I, I can't stand that. Uh, but what I like to do is pull out some of the, uh, cyan and then add it in as so it's like a, a punchy look. It gives the, the photo more of a golden uh, tone to it. That's one of my, my particularly favorite ways of using it. Just like with every filter that we have available inside of All-in-One Photo Raw, if you click the gear icon here, you can get to your blending options. Now, what I have found with the curves blending option, and you may recall this from one of my live streams, is using overlay, soft light, uh, and even saturation, I'm sorry, saturation and color, they yield some really cool results. Now, I personally like color when I'm going for a tone or a feel that's gonna be more like a, uh, a finishing look, like a LUT, all right? And later on in this video, I'll show you how you can make your own style of a LUT and then apply it even after you've made some edits and, and things of that sort. But ultimately, if you look here, uh, now I have this only affecting the color in my image. Now, the cool thing is if I think that there's too much on the skin, I can preserve the skin and I can just pull this back. Now, the I would probably just mask this in or mask this out. Uh, with a low opacity if I was really concerned about that because when I pull this to the right it's looking for everything that's similar to these skin tones and there's no way of really pinpointing it to the skin unless I go ahead and grab a brush and, and mask it out so 
that's one of the things you may have to do. Now, one of the other things that you can do is also use the apply uh, or the apply to and apply this either to just your neutrals. Um, and then you can also apply this to just shadows, midtones, highlights. Uh, the individual color channels here, that's up to you. I personally would not do it that way. But you can see there's some subtle differences when you start to work uh, with these particular blending options uh, in the way that, you know, you can get a good grasp. Now, again, this is just a introduction, brief overview. We're going to dive into some of the presets now and you will see them in action. Here we are with another photo. And this time I'm actually going to start with a preset. Uh, so as you can see, I have my preset pane open over here on the left hand side. I'll go ahead and make some of these uh, larger. The one we're going to start with is this bleach bypass with curves. Now it looks very magenta uh, and there's a reason for that. All right. So we're going to take a look at it. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller there. So that way our image gets bigger and then we'll come over here to the effects module. Now, obviously this preset was developed on a different image, but it gives us the starting points to really make some good adjustments. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the curves layer and we're going to take a look at the bleach bypass filter overall uh, because I don't believe I covered this earlier in the series. So I'm going to give a pretty good overview, uh, but there will be a separate video later on on the channel. So with the bleach bypass, what it's doing is it's really just allowing you to mimic a uh, process. In fact, we'll read what it allows you to do. Uh, so that way I'm not paraphrasing something bad. Uh, this filter is based upon an old color film processing technique where the bleaching step was skipped. It reduces the saturation and increases the contrast. It's a popular look in the cinema. So we're going to get something like a cinematic look. Now this image without anything on it is very colorful. I like the uh, oranges and you know, just the warm tones that are in this area of the image. And then it's darker and a lot cooler towards the bottom here. And then it's dark over here with a nice little flare coming out. Uh, overall, you know, that's what drew me to this image. But what I wanted to do was kind of ch transform the overall look of the image, which is why the bleach bypass and, and make it more cinematic, uh, which has, you know, some contrast to it. Uh, and we'll mess around with the opacity to get a good look. So the first thing is the amount filter. Uh, now, I personally don't care to start with the amount filter. In fact, I personally like to start with the color that I want to see in the image. So what I'm going to do is click on this little box icon. This brings up our color selector. Uh, and, you know, this just allows me to choose where I want the tone of the image to really go. And I have the amount already turned up. So I'm going to be able to see what this adjustment looks like overall. Now I want this to be, you know, it's a sunset image. So I think some reds and oranges really need to be in this image. And, you know, this is going to be your own, uh, your own creation, but just giving you the idea. So maybe somewhere around there and maybe it can be a little brighter. Let's see if that now maybe darker and that way it's not as yeah, this is given a really nice rich tone. All right. So the amount that's in there, I think I'm okay with if I turn this off and on, you'll see that it really gives like a red tone to the overall image. Uh, and I'm going to leave it there. Now we can come back up here and mess around with the bleach bypass overall. The amount slider is just how much of the effect do you want this, you know, in your image. Now, obviously this is going to be to taste. And I think that there was a little too much in the image. Uh, so maybe to about there. 
Now, I would also recommend leaving the amount uh, probably about 50%, uh, which is the default when you're first starting out. But with a preset, you know, you already have some options selected for you. And I think that contrast wise, that was the right amount of uh, contrast. If you look down here, it just makes this darker or lighter. I don't want this to be too dark, right? Uh, and then also up at the top, it makes it a little bit darker. So I'm going to bring down the contrast. Now, this is a nice landscape image. Uh, in my preset, I pulled down on the detail. If you crank it up, it just looks way too grungy. Uh, and that may work. But in, in cinematic uh, styles, things aren't very sharp. Uh, they're sharp well, but they're, or they're sharpened well, but they're also perceivably sharp as opposed to uh, like graphically enhanced sharpness. So I pull back on the detail a little bit. Again, your own personal preference on how you want that to look. And then I also like to bring the brightness up because I like my cinematic looking photos to be a little bit brighter. But if you want it to be a little bit darker, you can do that. I do like my photos to be a little bit brighter. In fact, I think this one should be a little bit more bright. But understanding that this is a sunset image, I don't need it to be all the way up here because then that's just unrealistic, right? It's not like that at sunset. Uh, I want people to be able to see what's going on in the image here, um, but not so much that it takes away from the aesthetic of this being a sunset. And then this is where you can mess around with your mount slider. And you can do this one of two ways. You can put this up to 100% and then bring back your opacity and, you know, just kind of make this like a... a very, very faint, uh, you know, working with the opacity this way. Now I could pull this all the way down and that is like so subtle. I could barely tell, uh, to the point where, you know, maybe somewhere around here, this is a, a good set, right? This looks like something that you would see in a movie. Now, what do you use the curve for? For. Well, in this particular preset, I used it as an overall warming to the final result. As you can see, I pulled down in the cyans or into the cyans on the blue channel. The green channel, I have a few things going here. Uh, now, again, this is where I get a little disappointed with on one not being able to remove individual nodes. So the best that you can do, because control Z uh, or command Z isn't gonna work very well, but the best that you can do is just click and drag and try and get these nodes, you know, if, if it's not working for you, try and get these nodes somewhere uh, back onto the original line. Um, you know, because if you hit the reset button, it's gonna reset the entire channel. And this is where, you know, having a curve inside of a preset with some predefined points gets a little irritating with the on one uh, package, but that is what it is. Cause I don't think that I need any green uh, adjustments. Like I didn't need more magenta in the highlights, which if I do that, it does look really nice, but I don't know if I need that. Eh, maybe a little bit, maybe we'll do something like that. And then we'll go to the red channel and it looks like I faded the reds here uh, and I added some red into the shadow area since I've already added some red uh, in the bleach bypass and that goes before the red inside of the curves. I think maybe I'll just bring that back down um, and then it looks like I need to open up my shadows a little bit. It's really dark over there. So instead of having the S curve where I'm making the, you know, adding a little bit more contrast, instead I'm gonna open up the shadow area and I'll pull back on my midtones just so I'm only impacting the shadow area. Uh, and that looks about right. Again, this is going to be very different for your image and building that final tonality 
is very, very uh, subjective. And then of course I can pull down on the opacity to make this stronger uh, or you know l more or less strong. Uh, and I think pulling it down to here and then just gradually fading it in really does help. Now, one thing that this image could probably do with is a local adjustment over in this area. I just feel like that is not coming out as pronounced as I would like it to be. So I'm going to click on lighten, maybe bring this down just a little bit. I don't need it like crazy. Uh, what's my feather at 25? I want this to be a pretty uh, good feather. And yeah, we can go with 100% flow and opacity. I'll make this just a little bit smaller and brush right over this area. And this is just going to open up some of this area here. This is a JPEG. If you are doing this on a raw photo, which I would recommend, um, you're going to have way more capability of opening this area up. Uh, because when you crank on your shadows, you're going to see that a lot better. But unfortunately, the way that this thing works, uh, I'm on a JPEG, so unfortunately I'm not going to get much shadow, you know, without artifacting, right? That looks unnatural. The goal here, uh, if you've watched any of my videos, is subtlety. Uh, unless you're not trying to go for subtlety, then it's whatever you're going for. But typically, I go for subtle adjustments. And I may even just bring down the opacity on this. Uh, click on the feather and feather this even more just to make it look more natural. Let's see what that looks like. Hit O. Yeah. Hit O again. Looks like maybe I missed this area over here. So I'll paint that in. Uh, and again, turn this off and on. It just brings a little bit of liveliness to that area uh, without overpowering the aesthetic overall. But that's uh, very subjective for this image. You may not need it for your own image. The goal here is really just learning uh, when to add certain presets that bring a color tint with contrast and I didn't go over the saturation slider here uh, because you know I did saturate the image a, a lot um, you know in relationship to this particular filter but that again is to taste uh, just like everything else all right so with this image what I want to do is use the curves filter to make the photo feel more warm the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer or adjustment filter, I should say, and I'm going to go straight to the blue channel and pull down from my midtones into the cyan area. As you can see, that instantly starts to warm up the photo, right? Now, what I like to do, and this is just me, is I really like to make sure that my shadows have some warmth to them. So what I'm going to do is pull down just a little bit on my shadow area and I'll mess around with it to see where I like it. And I think that's about right where I want it. But for some reason, or not for some reason, I know the reason. Now the photo is just way too uh, cyan or yellow. So I'm going to go back to the red channel. And what I want to do is pull up a little bit on the reds and see if I can balance this just a little bit better. And maybe even pull down on the blues. No, nope. I think the reds, that's where I want it. And these are very, very subtle adjustments. If you notice, I did not put a lot of red into this image. Now, turning it off and on, you can see that I really warmed up the image, right? Because I use more of the warm tones. Now, if for some reason you believe that this is just way too much for you, I completely understand that. So what you want to do is actually just pull down on the opacity until you get to a nice and even blend that satisfies your aesthetic, right? Uh, and I do want this to be a little subtle but I want the photo to feel more warm. And I think that this achieves that particular goal. 
So with one curve, you can do so much. Uh, and I would, I would actually be done with this, but if I wanted to go a little bit further, I can hit the gear icon and then I can come over to my blend mode and maybe mess around with, uh, with either overlays, soft light, maybe even come down to saturation or color just to see what look that gives. Luminosity, not gonna do much, but uh, color and saturation, those are definitely big jumps. The saturation one really makes the greens look more green. Um, and then it even plays more uh, like warm tones into our skin. Whereas the color just kind of adds the color over the image. Uh, it's not as drastic as having this as normal. Now, I personally think I'm gonna leave it on normal, uh, but if I wanted to, I could also pull this away from the skin tones. As mentioned earlier during the introduction, when you pull away from the skin tones, you are pulling it away uh, globally or across the entire image. So it's important that you know you find the, the a nice blend uh, but overall, I think that this is the look that I would go with on this image. It looks natural, it looks pleasing, and it's very simple. All right, so here's the last thing that I wanted to show you. What we have here is a photo that I've added in some adjustments to, and this is really just a baseline development adjustment that I use uh, whenever I in process some of my raw photos. Now. Throughout this tutorial, I've been showing you how to add the curves adjustment uh, or the curves presets all by themselves. And you didn't have anything uh, to really compete with. Well, if I go ahead and right click and I click on insert preset, it's going to bring my preset of the curves and cross. It's going to bring those right above whatever I had in here before. Now, this could be what you want, and it could absolutely work. I'm going to guess that this is not what you want because you're not going to really be able to do any sort of uh, opacity changes to the group. You're going to have to go into individual I items, and that is just not, in my opinion, it's not the best way. All right, so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to right click on this layer and we're going to hit duplicate layer. Now, you could have clicked the duplicate option there. And now we have obviously a duplicate of our settings and everything of that sort. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to right click and we are going to hit new stamped layer. Okay. And then this is going to give us a new layer right above our last layer. Now we can turn all of those off and we'll still have, well, if we turn that off, we'll still have the adjustments. They're just baked into this particular layer. So now what we can do is we can click on our curves and cross process and it's going to add that as its own layer. Okay. Then if this is, you know, way too strong, all we have to do is pull down on the opacity and blend it in, right? So you can go from zero and move that all the way up. Now, what is that doing? It is, think of this as like groups inside of Photoshop or Affinity Photo. This is now your group and this opacity slider is blending uh, evenly all of your adjustments that are inside of your filter. This is the best way as of right now that I can find to make this a, uh, you know, beneficial. Now, if on one ever decides to allow us to group filters together inside of one image, that would be great. You know, that's a awesome enhancement, uh, I think. But if not right now, the best way to do it is to make a merged visible layer. Now, you're not going to be able to make a merged layer unless you copy. You have to have two layers to merge something. So that makes sense. Um, the other thing you can do, if you want it to, you can export that JPEG or that image with all of your uh, baked in 
file settings or whatever and then bring it back in but i feel like that's a little clunky and cumbersome so this is the easiest way so there it is don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you're new here if you want to check out more content in the creative color mini series click the box over here and if you want to check out the last video that i uploaded in the series check the box right here Till next time stay inspired and keep creating